So you pay that. Make a zombie. Give everything haste and plus one. I like that a lot. Down to 15. And yeah. See you, Amalia. And we have three walkers. This is it. This is pretty BS. This is pretty. B and we get to also draw a card because it died. Hello, welcome to the channel. Today we are looking at a Rakdos Super Friends build. I thought it'd be quite interesting to see if we can kind of get away with it. There are 20 Planeswalkers in the whole deck, so that's exactly what you're here to see. Some of your favourites, Chandra, Chandra, Chandra. Uh, <laughs> there's a lot of Chandras. Angrath gets rid of stuff your opponent's hand. Jaya gives you advantage. There's a lot of really fantastic mono red walkers. All the Chandras are actually excellent, and I just adore using them in the deck. Rakdos himself is pretty decent. He can draw you cards as long as your opponent doesn't sack any, any non-token permanents. This can be pretty damn good. If your opponent's field is empty and they've got nothing to get rid of, you're just going to draw two cards each turn, which is decent on top of a 6-6 six, six body. So yeah, let's just see how well he does. I'm actually pretty excited to use it. Red-black is one of my favourite colour combinations. Very aggressive. And this is a very controlling version of that. Hope you enjoy. So this hand is a little bit risky. We've got a quadruple black spell. One mountain. But we've got the removal. The removal makes the hand, to be, to be honest, like... I'm going to have to use one of these treasures to use one of the black spells. But getting rid of Amalia is going to be really good. She's she's just really good. Crucious. Let's go for Monkey. They have no counters. Yeah, I think going for Crucious is fine. And this is going to seem a bit weird, but let's get rid of Feed the Swarm. And then we'll choose Lesser. Okay, and Land is fine. We want to get to the Invoke to Spare. As soon as the ball. A bit of a risky move, discarding removal. But we're get, we're aiming to get more removal. And Black Cleave Cliffs comes in untapped, which is nice. So I could just use Infernal Rise or go for Zariel. Let's go for Zariel. Make a make a goblin. Devil, should I say. And I don't want to attack in. How does this work if you discard a land with lesser than zero? So I'll get... If I discard a land, does it mean I get a land? Mm, probably not. I don't want to risk it. And yeah, I keep discarding removal. And ironically, I said at the start I wanted to keep removal, but I'm being really greedy here. I'm essentially prioritizing keeping lands for this. I kind of want to keep the Bastion as well. I don't know. I'm kind of just doing different things. This is the obvious route, isn't it? Keeping these and killing their stuff. It's kind of boring, though. Sometimes there's value to be gained in experimentation. The route less travelled is something you learn more from. You know, I could have I could have just grasped and killed their stuff, but... Okay, gain life. Make that bigger. That's a nice synergy there. Other things done. Okay. So what do we do here? Do we just make another... thing? I'm not really sure. Okay, for black. Oh, we'll make another devil. Keep the defences online. It's zero to make a devil. And now I'm having concern about the Bastion. Do I just keep the Bastion? Do I keep the Bastion? I don't know. No, I don't know. Who knows? Was that the right move? I kind of wanted, wanted to get the ultimate for Zara a bit quicker, but I'm thinking it takes five mana total to do that. I'm just being greedy. I mean, I really want to spend five on Invoke to Spare next turn. I don't really have enough to do another five on this. 
the Amalia is getting bigger and bigger, so I have to prepare for her onslaught. No attacks again. Oh, Liliana. That's crazy. That is actually crazy here because we have two creatures to sack. Just hope they don't have a mana tithe. Fantastic. <laughs> My army will envelop two creatures the each. Let's reduce the battle to now they're down with the do, down with the don't. Um, no, 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 actually it's fine. If I want to keep Elias, he'll call. No, okay, so that was the right move. I was going to say, if they if they'd kept the Eli so they would have ironically actually lost it there. And let's make another blocker. Fight for Avernus, you fiend. And I think I'm actually going to get rid of the arena because we have Liliana now. And Big Lily can draw us. And we've got two board wives. I think we're in a really secure position. They this is what I mean about critical mass. If you've ever heard me talk about critical mass, it's just when you have enough board presence to kind of sustain the rest of the game. Obviously, there's a few ways that you can be defeated out of that. Farewell is one of them. Farewell is just an aberration. Eight mana Ugin was banned, and then they made Farewell, which is six mana. Even cheaper. Only for white, obviously, but yeah. So anything that just is one card kind of wins you the game, it's always going to be a bit... a bit naughty. Naughty yeah, design. And we can just block that. So I, I will. We even get two triggers, yeah. You can see why this Lily is like, what, $30 in paper now? Really very powerful. What to do? We could even steal the Amalia and kill it. I mean, that's a thing. I mean, we lose three life. But that's fine. They lose their commander. Let's see if I can pay that. Make a zombie. Give everything haste and plus one. Let me like that a lot. Down to 15. And yeah. See you, Amalia. And we have three walkers. This is it. This is pretty BS. This is pretty B And we get to also draw a card because it died. <laughs> I feel so dirty. This is dirty, isn't it? But even though, like, in the grand scheme of Historic Brawl, I still don't feel like this is even, like, 11. This this is mean they're destroying the Cosmos Elixir because that was going to gain them some life. Okay. How do we win here? So we'll make a zombie. Make them discard and lose two. No fire. No and, yeah, the hammer hit them at the precise time they conceded. Nice timing there, Angrath. Okay, a very, very powerful hand versus of Nixilis. So their deck is going to be pretty aggressive as well. Especially when they play out some low curve creatures. Copying of Nixilis is going to be an issue. We don't currently have a way to really deal with him and his clones. So yeah, it does make him a very, very unique threat, to be honest. We can, however, go for Thoughtseize, maybe get rid of a small creature here. Okay, they have the Rotting Ridge Saw. So this is the actual combo. So the Rotting Ridge Saw, they play that 7 mana, um, a 3 mana 7, 6, and then they go for the Ob, which means they get an Ob with 7 loyalty if they use Casualty. And this doesn't really matter because they don't have blue, what we set the cavern to. They have an Exile effect. Um, let's go for this Chandra here. And then if we do top deck a land next turn, we can go for the Professor Onyx. So we are really hoping we get a land. We may cast that card. So Chandra can't actually reveal lands with their ability and play them. Because you have to be able to cast the card. Mm. I guess we'll just have the red. And go for this Liliana here. That's got three toughness, so maybe keeping the Yohani's expertise will be good. But I still I still want to use this Liliana here. I think we'll get rid of... Oh, I don't know. I think we'll get rid of the Onyx. I know that sounds a bit crazy, but next turn, if they go for the Predator, 
we can go for Johanna's expertise into the Chandra, which I think is a lot better than just going for the Onyx. But I don't know, maybe I'm wrong. Especially given that they have the E to Extinction in their hand as well, which can just get rid of anything big. They might do that here on the Chandra. Unless they want to keep their cards. They prefer to keep the cards in their hand. Fair enough. They're going to surveil one as well. Nice. So we hit the land. So we actually probably want to play this first. Because you have to cast a spell there and then. Valky. Okay. So we will cast the Valky here. Which means we get to look in the hand. And they've got loads of kill spells. So they're going to have to use kill spell on the Valky. To get their creature back. Although saying that. They could just use the Blood Chief's Thirst on the Chandra here. Which would be pretty annoying. But we do slow them down a little bit I suppose. Because if they want the creature back for Obnixilis. They're going to have to kill the Valky first. But then Chandra's on ultimate. So they don't kill her here. Yeah, that would be foolish. I don't need this. Okay. Yeah, I don't know how I feel about this. They've got a lot of removal. They just play the cat. Okay. And they've got a kill spell in hand, which is kind of sad. It kind of makes me want to just... I don't really know. They're going to kill that next turn. Hmm. Let's go for Chandra. Yep. I'm basically Not really sure what to do, to be honest. You're lucky this is a warning uh, shot. You'll give a strike at Rich. So next turn we have the Rakdos guaranteed, as long as the treasure remains there. Hmm. I'm not really sure what to do. If they attack in with a cold and familiar, do we just block with a Valky to keep the Chandra up? They probably just use the Infernal Grasp and go for Obnixilis. Yeah, I guess. So that's not great, but they've they've used so much removal here. They've used three pieces. Attacking into the Chandra. They're probably going to go for the Obnixilis cloned <laughs> so they get a bit of the cat. Unless there's something better for them to do. And then we'll have to see what happens from there. At least we can play the Rakdos. Two Obnixilises. At least one's only on one loyalty. <laughs> I'm not afraid of any of you. Uh, but they do get to tick up, don't they? Defy me. So and now this Chandra can't actually deal with them. Yeah, okay, that's pretty annoying. All because of a silly cat as well. The devil. <laughs> well, that's an answer. Is my entertainment. I guess we'll just try and keep that down. Oh, you're quite I mean, luckily we have the Bedevil as well, so we can just kill one of their walkers as well. Brotherhood's end, three damage to each creature on each planeswalker. So now I'm really regretting not dealing one to the big Obnixilis, Obnixilis, because I could have basically killed both of them if I'd done that, really. Although maybe I still, we'll see what they do. Blood on the snow to kill my creature and bring him back. The Registaur, wonderful. At least they lose the they'll lose the predator. Yeah, that that does suck actually. Go ahead. Plead for Six us. mana, swap our creatures around. Okay, this is definitely going to be a challenge. Now they've got a devil. You work for me now, runt. I could just take out their entire team, can I? I think that's probably good. Right, so let's tap accordingly. Let's use the Cavern of Souls here. Oh, yeah, this needs to have four mana. Yeah, that works out fine. So we kill the Rotting Registaur. They do have the Hive of the Eye Tyrant, annoyingly. Uh, no, we need to... This is going to die, so we need to tick up this first. And then we'll destroy everything on their side of the field. 
My empire crumbles. So it's very likely they go for Hive of the Eye Tyrant and they attack into the Chandra, which means hey, better not ruin my it's pretty annoying because they're kind of getting a free kill there. And they have well and truly taken care of everything we've done, really. And now they're going to exile stuff from our graveyard as well. Yeah, they got very lucky with this Hive and they've got a Castle Lock Thwain as well. What are we going to do? Now we need we need eight mana for the Rakdos. Yeah, just loads of removal. Next time, Off, I'll wear more but we don't suits. have the bull. Do we have the, enough for the blocker as well? I guess we can. It only does three, so yeah, we can just search for a mountain. I'm ready. We have the high ground. It's actually pretty decent because it ensures we can keep. Playing Rakdos, you know, eventually four, five, six, seven, eight. So next time we can play Rakdos, which would be a decent blocker. They're gonna go for the Immerstone Predator though. Hmm. And they want to draw a card with Castle Lock Thwing. We can actually just kill the Immerstone with Cloth because we have a Mountain. Oh, invoke despair, that's even better. So we've got three mountains. They don't have any creatures to sacrifice here. So we can just straight up kill this, and then we're going to draw two cards with Rakdos. So it looks like Rakdos is coming in clutch with this advantage. Because we're not in a, we're not in a very good position. Having it invoke despair is also really cool. Oh wow, and we drew an arena. So maybe things have turned around a bit now. Just realized how strange that game attack is, Black Potato. Um So by the looks of it, the deck is just mostly removal. Priest of the Forgotten Gods, that's gonna be a bit slow here. Unless they somehow give it haste and two creatures come down. What can they do? Two of Nick, two of Nick's and Man, that is a mouthful to say. So they're not going to be very happy about this because the Invoke Despair will get rid of Creature Walker. Uh, I'm actually not going to discard. Although I probably should have because Koth gives us a, a mountain. Oh, I have a job for you. Okay. Fair enough. Davriel. Ooh, so many things here. Let's get a mountain first and foremost. Invoke despair. That's very, very mean. Very mean card. Crucius. I might have done it as well. I feel like that's put us in a tremendously good situation now. And it's Good we didn't play the Crucius first because the one damage would have been able to kill the Crucius here. Let's play them out. If they have Fatal Push, they can actually kill Crucius, but I, I doubt they do. Okay, and we even have... No one is that beats me Menace? Yeah, it is Menace. So we can't block it with Crucius, sadly. So we're going to trade the Mountains for, for actual cards. So that's really good synergy. Getting a mountain with Koth, discarding it with Crucius to get to, to to get a bigger spell, which isn't a land. That's pretty spicy synergy. I do enjoy that. Takanuma. So they're going to get back something from the graveyard. What's going to be the best thing here? I don't really know. They're going to go for the Regisaur synergy next turn, maybe? Target player draws seven and loses seven. That is... Interesting. So that would flash the Duke of Bog. I think we've got him if we just... What should we do? We have so many options now. Let's just kill this. Catch this. Now we can Duke of Bog their graveyard. Get rid of their graveyard synergy. Wow. Yeah. The card draw from Rakdos seemed to be pretty effective. We must have drawn about six-ish cards there, which is, when you think about it in the overall like length of the game that is a lot of cards 
drawing that many cards is almost like doubling your starting hand. So yeah, I, I really like this. I think it's pretty cool. And uh, let's see if we can get any more wins. Okay, so we've got two Chandras and we're facing a big Chandra. Interesting to see what happens here. Just get the tap land out first, I think. And then we get to establish the field with our own Chandras. And we even drew their commander. So this is kind of interesting, seeing so many here. Yeah. I fear that some of our removal is just not going to be that effective. Go ahead. Fight me as hard as you can. So they're going to have four mana in their next turn. Now, how the heck do we deal with their Chandra? We don't... I mean, I guess our Chandra... Our Chandra can deal with it, but if they play theirs first, they're going to have more loyalty. Alt Garth Fury, so that kills that. Yikes. Okay, that's annoying. Three, four, fine. We'll go for Chandra 2. See how this works. Deal 2 damage to them here. Sadly, we can't cast that. The amount of times I've seen people use that ability and still click the card, thinking you can cast it for free. Sadly, that's not how it works. Iron Crag. So they're really building up for their Chandra Cosmos Elixir as well. If we had some artifact removal, that would be wonderful. How much damage can she deal? Six, but that would kill her. Oh, this is gonna hurt. I guess we just go for our own Chandra. Start the race. Off to the races, as they say in the Pro Tour. They always say that phrase, off to the races. You'll notice it a lot. If you've ever watched the old Pro Tours, watching people play Tournament Magic, they always say that. First game starts. It kind of drives me mad. It reminds me of the Call of Duty E3 I had once. Which was, um, they just kept saying boots on the ground. This was a waste of oh, they just killed everything. That's pretty lucky they had that. Uh, sure, yeah, so we're going to be in a lot of trouble now. <laughs> As if they had that. They had the answer to their own uh, commander. So, they're at 25. The thing is, um, oh no, and they've got all B1 as well. Jeez, talk about synergy. They've just got every synergy piece. I don't think we're going to come back from this, especially with all be one. Because um, this does... It just deals damage whenever counters go on things. Cosmos Elixir is going to put them out of range. Okay, so we just might as well go full maximum boost here. Four, five... Go for a T fling, it doesn't matter again, it's non blue. Okay. So as I said, they can use the Chandra to kill kill the Rakdos, but they would lose the Chandra, so who knows? Do they sack something to give us zero cards? They're just gonna give us Ooh, okay. Oh no, and they've also got Inventor's Fair. This is kind of making me feel like they have Paradox Engine in the deck. A lot of people use this with that. How do we get around this? I mean, the Invoke Despair gets rid of an enchantment as well, so this can get rid of the Ulfgaard Ulf Fury and the Orby 1. Or, oh, sorry, not the and. But yeah, I, f I fear as though Orby 1 is just going to kill us. Lithoform Engine to double triggers. Jesus. That's kind of scary. They're completely ignoring our attack force. Palantir of Orthanc. Another counter, more damage. They can copy that if they want, or they can copy the Cosmos Elixir trigger to draw two cards. That really is annoying. Just have them draw a card. I, I don't think we can be taking much more damage. We're taking one from. Oh, they're going to use. They're going to use it to target that. Okay, fair enough. No, they're using the stack to copy that. What did they copy? They copied. I'm not really sure. Uh, let's just lose one life here. I'm a bit concerned. Right. Okay, let's get a combat. They have three cars in their hand now. Kind of scary. Down to 18. 
five, six. We don't have an untapped mana, which is kind of annoying. I think we'll play this one. And I can't see them having any creatures. I'm just going to play this out for zero. Because when they kill our stuff, they'll lose life. And if in, if in their next turn they play lots of creatures, I'll be very, very sad. Uh, okay. Yeah, we'll just pass. Do they sack anything? How greedy are they? If they don't care, it means they have some incredible combo synergy thing. Potentially. They're gaining one, two, three a turn. If they double it, they can gain five a turn. They're losing one a turn with this. Chandra. Are they just going to uptick? Oh god, that's six damage. Yeah. I'm, <laughs> I don't think there's much we can do. They've just got way too much. Okay. And then they've got this emblem as well, which they can copy with Lith the Form Engine eventually. Yeah, because it's an activated ability. And then just by doing that, it deals two damage. Goodness me. It's just too much. We're going to be taking two a turn. Oh, looks like someone's getting a little sweaty. And we have more triggers, so they're going to draw more. I don't want to lose life, so just give them a card. And it does another damage. Everything just seems to compound itself. What can we draw that would be good? I don't really, I don't really know. I don't think there is anything left. Two damage down to ten. We probably just... We die in their turn because of all B1. Ah, let's just go. All modes. We're dead anyway. <laughs> let's just have a look in the hand, see what they're, they're working with here. Do they have any kind of combos or anything? Oh my goodness. Well, we'll, we'll die to the haste either way. Cool. All we can do is just send them a message on the way out. Make them lose the Chandra. Make them lose a Ulfgart Fury. And they just win. All they have to do is play Chandra again, and it's going to be... Six damage to us. Give them the glory. I always give people the chance to finish me off. It's it's the reason people like to play, isn't it? Just to finish people off, so go ahead. Unless they start doing all sorts of weird other silly things. <clears throat> go on then, get the final blow. Torrady Commando. Just play, play Commando. Interesting that this cares about loyalty... It sees the loyalty being put on, even though conceptually I always thought they entered with counters. Yeah, it seems that with Orbi 1, it actually acknowledges them coming in with no loyalty and then you put encounters on. That's quite interesting whenever you put one more counters on a play permanent or player. I think that would, have, that would trip me up if I didn't see it done here. Yeah, interesting. You're learning some new rules about the game, yeah. This is a great hand, surely. We have the Meat Hook Massacre versus a Krenko Goblin deck. So, fingers crossed. We get to deploy this in time. Gonna hit us with some goblins on the way in. <laughs> I don't know why goblins always make me laugh. They just have funny little faces, don't they? It's nice for the artist because the artist gets a bit of freedom. Because I feel like goblins have a lot of different looks. Like, this one is very green. This one looks to me almost like a Warhammer orc. Like that kind of green. Very, very bright saturated. And this one's a lot more subdued. I'm, I think I'm just going to kill this. I'm scared. I'm scared of what may come. Although now this gives haste. But for crater. Oh, but market connections. That is a very naughty card. As long as we can... Stem the life loss a bit. I think I can red deal with black, but there's not many ways. There's artifact ways, there's chaos warp effects, things that 
shuffle permanence back in, but I feel like this is fairly safe. If you descended, create a treasure. Okay. That's pretty good. Although, descending is only permanent cards. I keep drawing cavernous souls. This is very peculiar. I, I made a post the other day about cards that people keep seeing over and over again, and I keep drawing cavern. Sorin, I think we're going to go for the lifelinker. Just a bit of a blocker. Try and stabilize our life loss here. We want to keep this alive if possible. Just to gain a little bit back. Mask with Nexus makes gobos. Okay. Let's just go for the mana here. And let's look at the top card. Real top card. That's a pretty good draw, to be honest. Lose zero loyalty for revealing dire that. Times call for dire tactics. And if we give a Chandra. I kind of want to I want to deploy this one first because she's the worst of the two. And I feel like if they had removal, they'd use it on the first big thing they see. Have you seen so that's why I want to kind of you want to taunt the opponent kill spells out. You don't want to use your best things first. Not all the time. Because it's likely people bank powerful removal for powerful cards. I do feel like we're in a very powerful position here. But never underestimate Krenko. This can go nuts. You know, they have like a perforous effect. Hasty things. They can make an innumerable, innumerable amount of gobos. Goblin fire leaper. Okay, and two goblins. I mean, there you go. That's, that's three goblins. So, four damage, two damage to any target. Two damage to any target. Okay, let's just keep taking them out one by one. It's crazy how she just ticks up and kills. Target creature. Sadly, that doesn't hit walkers. I feel I feel a bit bad for them here. They don't they don't really have much versatility versus our stuff. Make another life linker. Get Rakdos out. A massive 6-6. Six, six. Go over the top. Nice. Okay. And it's very unlikely they sack anything here. Because they want this for haste. And they want this for goblins. And we just replenish our entire hand. And at that point you have to ask yourself. How good is Rakdos? This guy. And I think the answer is very good. I've not even used them that much. So we can make uh, three goblins here. Straight out of fact, they're going to make three goblins. Oh my goodness, they're going to make six goblins. See, in any other game where I didn't have a meat hook massacre, I would be worried. Well, let's just go for the alpha. This is kind of a revealing attack here. I don't even have to kill the Krenko because I don't want I don't want to lose my flyers either. So I'm happy to just X minus one, kill all the goblins, and just call it a game that way. Do we have enough to do? No. Okay, let's not get too greedy here. So X equals one. Takes care of all their things. And yeah, damn. Although, I always feel bad because when it's two or three colours versus monocolour, you know, that you always have the upper hand, really, because you've got double the answers, essentially. But you could you saw there how one turn they had so many goblins. If we didn't have a wipe, we may have been in trouble. We may have been in trouble. But again, we did have some lifelink and an onyx to potentially recover. So yeah. It was an interesting game. Always nice to face a different deck, though. Don't see many Krenkos. So, yeah, I think this works pretty well. It's just a really potent Planeswalker shell for Rakdos. Um, it's not the most creative deck in that regard, but it's difficult to synergize with this Rakdos because it doesn't really have a synergy. It like You could say you need to kill all of your opponent's things so they have nothing to sack, but you're doing that anyway. Um, it's a strange complaint to say a card is smooth going and it is nice, I suppose, to not have hoops to jump through. So I think it's a very powerful 
Commando, it's a bit vanilla though. It's like vanilla ice cream. It's tasty, but it's not really... I don't know. I feel like I'm giving it a bad name. I think it's awesome. I do like it. It's just, I like a few more hoops to jump through. You know, I want to, I want a bit more of a challenge. I think the reward is fine. I don't think you'll feel like the abilities are very resonant. Like it doesn't feel like Rakdos is doing anything in terms of the, the flavor of the ability. You know, like, let's just take Angler, for example, he's stealing creatures, he's controlling them for a turn and then he gets rid of them. But what does, what is Rakdos saying with his ability that kind of inspires you to create a deck. Yeah, I don't know. It's weird. It's one of the, it's a very strange situation. I really like it, but it's simple, basically. Yeah, that's kind of it. You have to, you, you can kind of put in any deck and it's, it's just kind of like the same thing as the Rusko problem. I'm not saying it's broken at all. I think this is really well balanced. In fact, it's really nicely designed, but something like Rusko, which is just ubiquitously good and you put it in any deck does it make the card exciting if you could put it in every deck? Probably not. I personally like legends that when you see them, you think, you say to yourself, wow, I've found the perfect spot for this. And it's such a weird, bizarre little thing. And it just fits that slot really well. I mean, maybe there is, maybe you've got, maybe someone out there is screaming right now saying, yes, this is the perfect card for my Rakdo shell. I've been waiting for this. But, you know, it's six mana card advantage. Um... Yeah, I've never been so torn about a card. It's it's good. It's fine. It's weak, susceptible to stuff. The shell I made complements it pretty well. But yeah, maybe there's something I'm missing. Maybe there's something else I can push it to do. But yeah, I just felt like value card is value card. Um, Yeah, not the, not the best kind of uh, way to end a video. But yeah, I had fun with it. That's the main thing. I'm not shouting from the rooftops, but I had fun with it. And I think you will too. It definitely won't let you down. And I think in some ways, being happy with something is perfectly fine compared to some commanders that just don't do it whatsoever. You know, some commanders you, you pay and you think, why do I bother? This guy is reliable. He's, he's a reliable dude. And sometimes that's just enough. Did you know that you can help my channel by watching another one of my videos? Go ahead. You know you want to.